Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ngozi and we are carrying on where we left off in the last video that I uploaded. That was part one, this is part two. I had a take in one go, but I've split the video into two parts so I don't rush through the topic. Now, if you're new to the channel, then don't forget to subscribe and click on that little notification bell so you never miss an upload. Let's get right back into it. It's my fault and my bad behavior had caught up with me. And she had this wooden spoon and she took off plummeting me. I didn't say anything, I just went, <gasps> and you know, she just started plummeting me. She beat and she beat and she beat. And my auntie was at the door and she was banging and she was screaming, please stop beating her, please, please stop. You're going to kill her, stop, please stop beating her. And my mum kept beating. She took my pants off and she took the wooden spoon and she started to pound me in the area. And when I say pants, not the American version of trousers, my underwear, she took it off and she started to plummet me right in the area, drag my feet up and started to plummet me right in the area. It was a disaster. The pain was so bad. I cried, I yelled and my auntie kept screaming from the other end of the door. And then I fell into the glass coffee table in the hotel my mom stopped pulled me out of it dragged the table cracked into the other hotel apartment by unlocking that door she had the key and then brought out the other one and switched it and then she kept beating me when she was done i don't remember how the door opened up but it was opened up and i flew out into my auntie's hands and i was crying and i was screaming for life thought i was dying and my aunt took me into the bathroom to give me a bath and i remember specifically when she put me in the bathtub. When she put me in the bathtub, it turned, the water turned pink. And I remember her stepping out of the bathroom, having a conversation with my mom. I was sobbing away, I was crying, I was shaking. And I remember her saying in my language, and that meant why did you do this you've hurt her you need to come see you've hurt her well why did you beat her that way you've hurt her come and see and i don't recall my mum coming in to see me at all my auntie came in she finished off the bath and she took me to bed that's how my mum reacted when she found one of my clues i tell you this is the reason why this behavior thrives and thrives and thrives in families and it thrives in homes because the kids are respectful of the individuals that our parents hang out with and if something goes wrong the child can't really make that mistake of saying he's doing that to me she's done that to me it's not possible it's one of the hardest things to do and it certainly was a hard thing for me to do this is something that is happening in homes and parents are busy working uh, trying to make ends meet and pursuing their career and handing their children over to nannies and sitters and relatives and people that they trust and your children are being destroyed under your own roof now in the end these children will grow up to be very resentful of you because they will grow up and they will see that this wasn't their fault and you could have done something anything to see that this didn't happen on your watch i understand that a lot of people go through you know breakups and you find yourself in a situation where you're alone with a child you're responsible you've got to go to work you need help blah 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 i get it but if you can't look your child in the eye and say well i'm sorry but you're going to have to deal with being abused and slept with by uncles and relatives and, and strangers because i need to make an extra buck and i'm trying to put a roof over your head if you can't say that to your child then ensure that it doesn't happen and you say how it isn't my place to tell you what to do it is my place to speak from the position of the child i didn't ask to be here you have to take care of me you have to keep me safe at the very least you have to do everything you possibly can to see that i am safe because things happen anyway you can't imagine that a few feet away from the vehicle someone in the car was going to do that now i'm an adult i know this is possible and i don't trust anybody i've become a helicopter mom 
This is a very sad experience for many children who, as a result of being raised in fear, are unable to communicate with their parents. It's just not a responsibility you can place on a child at any time, ever. Um, so it's important that parents start to pay attention to what's happening with their children. Uh, you would have a happy child one day and all of a sudden their behavior changes or it shifts. Don't be lazy and say it's hormonal or uh, it's teenage years or they're just becoming different now. They're growing up, they're battling hormones. You just shove it to hormones. The same way someone could say to a woman who is getting agitated on a particular topic or a particular situation and someone says, oh, it's the menopause. No, 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 no. Don't do that. When a child's behavior changes, start to pay attention. And ultimately, from the very beginning, you should have some kind of relationship with your child where they are trusting of you and you've had these conversations already. I've got my children to watch videos. I've had these conversations I'm having with you guys with my children. And they're all teenagers, except for one who's a preteen, she's 10. So it's such that the world is throwing this at us from all the television screens there's sodomy everywhere there is all sorts of poor behavior sexual behavior you know around and about us today and you know the ratings are all wrong um i mean it's everywhere so you can't say well i can't have that conversation with my child it's just i don't know how to have that conversation she's so innocent and just keep her sheltered that's just rubbish that's just rubbish it's everywhere they go to school it's happening some kids someone somewhere you have to get in front of it you have to develop that conversation with your child it has to be as easy as talking about the sunshine and the weather it has to be the same kind of ease with which that conversation can take place and i have that with my kids why do i have that with my kids because of my experience growing up so i went the other way I became a helicopter mom. It's, a, it's what I do. I know not everyone can do, but some people do what I do. I've never had anyone take care of my children. Never. No nannies, no help. Zero. From the time they were born till today, they're upstairs. And, you know, it's the half term and they're all in the house. I take them to their friends' parties. I stay parked outside. I pick you up. I bring you home. Yes, I know I'm crazy, right? Yes, I am. I make sure I take them to the school. I stand out. I wait outside the school. They come back. They come into the car. I take them back. If it's football, I take you. I wait outside for two hours, three hours. I don't care how long. I'm waiting. And when you come in, I'm looking right into your face. Are you all right? How did it go? Who did you meet? What did they say? That's the damage I have. So don't look at me as though, well, that's excessive. No, 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 it's damage. So don't come for me and say, well, why do you behave that way? That, that's how it came up in me. And if, if that's how it's come up in me, I'm happy because I'm able to watch. I'm able to pay attention. I'm able to read the signs. I can see as once a child, so I can see. And I don't want that to happen. It breeds anger in a child. It breeds resentment. And if it's already happened to your children, then there is a way to fix it. You still have to go to therapy. You, ha you still have to deal with it. If you want to salvage that relationship, if you care, you know, because at the end of the day, it's going to bring a rift and your children would want nothing to do with you. So please pay attention. Fast forward to being an adult. My son was two years old and my daughter was three and a half when we moved to a new town to raise a family and the neighbor's daughter quickly came over a young girl she probably was 12 or something and she came over and she said oh hi your kids are so cute oh can we come by and play and I said yes of course when we settle in of course always just press the bell and if we're home you can come in and play with the kids I remember thinking she's a bit old to want to play with little kids but I thought you know what she just probably thinks my children are cute yes and so she comes in one day you know presses the buzzer I open up the door and in she comes and she starts to play with my kids in a pool in the back garden and I sit you know inside the house against the chair looking out at them playing um, and then after a little while I went in and said come and get some snacks and they all came in this is what I mean by being a helicopter mom I already am someone who's very suspicious I already am someone who always expects that something nasty is going on and that in itself can be a tricky thing you know you could cause the same problem but in a different way you know but I'm watching it I've been to counseling I'm trying to figure that out 
how to deal with them and how to watch them and guide them and just make sure that no one has that effect on them okay um, and I went into the kitchen they all came in and she got a glass of water I started putting together a little snack and I just asked a question and I said do you um, are you an only child and she said no she has other siblings and I thought oh really where are they because I only see you and she said no she doesn't live with them they live with our parents and I thought who are you living with she said it's her foster parents and i thought oh you're in foster care she said yes and said well, what's wrong what's the problem and she said well i was touching my brothers in a way that i shouldn't i was shocked she's been outside with my kids so i just said oh did you well that's a shame um anyway listen it's time for me to start preparing dinner. You might have to come back on a different day and come and play, okay? And she was like, yeah, sure. So I gave her a snack and out she went and I made sure she never came back to my house. I'm always watching. I'm always looking. Parents, keep watching. Keep looking. You pursue the money. You pursue the coin. You pursue the career. And you hand your child off to someone else to take care of. Listen, the human species are the only species that give their children to someone else to take care of no animal in the world does that no animal you ever see an eagle say hey there eagle over there in that tree i will pay you a stick and a lizard to come and sit and watch my eggs while i head off to gather food for my family it doesn't happen we're the ones that do that we have an excuse I, I need to make money. I have to put a roof over your head. Of what use is it for me to have a roof over my head just so I can be abused under that roof? You have a responsibility to take care of your children. You have a responsibility to keep them safe. They didn't ask to be here. If you can't afford to have children, don't have them. Wait until you've created that entire empire. You want to eat your cake, you want to have it. You want to have the children, you want to have the career, you want to have the big house. You want to juggle all those balls and keep that important one right at the bottom of the list and say, I put a roof over your head and I put food in your mouth. You should be grateful. You have to start finding a way to reprioritize the position and the safety of your children so that this doesn't happen on your watch. It's really important to make some efforts. I'm not having a go at parents out there who have found themselves in terrible situations where they have to you know, go off and make a living for their child. Maybe they ended up becoming a single parent and just there are a lot of complications that force a parent into handing off their child into someone's care. All I'm saying is pay attention. That's not an excuse to not still pay attention. However tired you are when you come home, pay attention. Go up to their room, ask questions, find out what's going on. It's really important. Watch for the signs, check and see what's going on. I hope your family hasn't been damaged by this kind of experience. And even if your family has had this experience already and it's you know too far gone, there's still therapy. You can have conversations, you can fix relationships and you can learn from them. But please, parents, pay attention. Pay attention. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon in the next video. Take care. Bye.